What's up guys? In this video, what I want to do is show you the only two types of problems that I recommend my students use substitution for when solving a system of equations. Now, substitution is powerful. It's actually really important. It's actually even more useful outside of a solving system of equations chapter or test. However, a lot of times when we're dealing with problems inside of systems of equations, I don't think using substitution to solve your system is going to be the best case because even though the concept is extremely important, a lot of times it takes more work than it would just to be able to use elimination. So the only two examples I want my students to be able to solve a system of equations is one, when both equations are solved for the same variable or two, one equation has a variable that is isolated. Okay, so you can see in this first example, I have y equals three x minus four and y equals two x plus nine. So doing a problem like this during substitution is extremely easy because basically all we simply need to do is set the equations equal to each other, right? If three x minus four is equal to y, and 2x plus 9 is equal to y, well, then they're going to be equal to each other, right? They're both equal to y, meaning they're both equal to each other. So therefore, I can just write them as a simple equation as 3x minus 4 equals a 2x plus 9, and then go ahead and solve for x. Now, the next best thing is once you solve for x, remember, we have to go ahead and solve for y. So I need to plug in this value of x in for my x in one of these two equations. Now, the best thing about having two equations that are both solved for y, it doesn't matter which equation you plug 13 in for x, just go ahead and pick one. Sometimes one might be a little bit easier than the other. And in this case, I'm just gonna plug it into the bottom equation, but again, it's all up to you. So I'll go ahead and plug a 13 in for x and then simplify. Now that you can see, I have a value for X and Y that are going to satisfy this equation. Now, this next example, the reason why I like using substitution here is because again, I already have a variable isolate. And yeah, there's gonna be a lot of problems where you have a variable that only has a coefficient of one. And sometimes doing substitution with that is not that bad, right? I mean, again, to isolate your Y, what do you have to do? Subtract the two X on both sides. That's not really that hard. So sometimes you might wanna break my rules. And if you do have a variable that has a coefficient of one, then you can go ahead and use substitution by isolating the variable. But I like to go ahead and stick my guns here and saying whenever my variable is actually already isolated, then I'll use substitution. So in this case, we have x is equal to a 5y minus 2, right? Now remember in this last example, x was equal to 13. What do we do with that 13? We replaced it with an x. Well, here my x is equal to 5y minus 2. So in my top equation, I have a variable x. I can replace that with a 5y minus 2. Just make sure when you do plug it in that you're going ahead and using parentheses. I did that when I had a number and you're going to want to do the same thing with an expression. Okay, now to get rid of my parentheses, I just need to go ahead and apply my operation. So I'm going to apply some distributive property. And when I go and do that, I'm going to get a y times 5y, which is going to be a 10y. And two times negative two is going to be a negative four is going to equal seven. Now I can combine my like terms. Y plus 10 Y is going to be a 11 Y. And then I'll add a four to the other side. And therefore 11 Y is going to equal 11. I can just divide by 11 on both sides and I can say Y is now equal to one. Now again, the cool thing is I just figured out my value of Y. I already have an equation that is isolated for X. I can simply just plug the one in for Y in my bottom equation. You could do it in the top, but then you have to do a little bit of work to go ahead and solve for Y. So I'm just gonna take this value, plug it into my bottom equation. And when I do that, I get a five times one, which is five minus two, therefore X is equal to three. So a lot of times students struggle. Should I use elimination? Should I use substitution? And to simplify this decision process, that is why I created this rule. I only use substitution when I already have an equation with a variable isolated. But again, the more practice and experience you get with solving a system of equations, the easier it is to experiment using substitution and elimination in different formats. But if you're struggling with this concept, I hope this video was helpful for you. And if you want more examples on solving systems of equations, algebraically or graphing, then check out the playlist I have down below where I have multiple videos of me working through different examples. If you want any additional notes or resources that I provide my students inside my courses, then go ahead and check out the resources and links I have for you down below. Or go ahead and check out the next video I have for you here. Cheers.